Good afternoon, oh. Woodland Pond. It gives me great pleasure today to present two residents who I'm sure are known to you as they do many things in the community, but today we're going to focus on their quilting experience and expertise. We have Bernice Leonard and Carol Natoli. So we're going to go through some um, facts about their background and then about their experience with quilting. So Bernice, I'll start with you, if I may. Um, tell us uh, where you moved from and what you did in your professional life before you moved here. Um, going backwards, for the last place I lived before here was in Woodstock, New York. And before that, we were 33 years in Red Hook, New York. And um, over that time, I knew I should not begin quilting <laughs> until I was retired. Carol? Me too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't from Woodstock. <laughs> For over 50 years, I guess, we lived about four miles away from here in New Paltz. Talk to the camera. <laughs> and um, before that, we lived in Queens, pretty much. And uh, I didn't take up quilting until I retired either because I was afraid I'd like it and wouldn't want to go to work. And I was smart to wait. And I retired when my third granddaughter was born. And so I can keep track of how many years I've been quilting and it's 20 years now. 20 years. Yeah. Okay. Um, quilting has been around, certainly around the world, but I've seen a lot of quilts uh, in our colonial days from shows that I've watched or antique road show or different quilt um, presentations. But tell me, um, Bernice, how, how did you get into quilting? Well, I think it all began with a baby quilt, which I slept under. <laughs> in, uh, so I, 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 I was in a crib for a long time. And then, you know, it comes time, you got to get out of your parents' room. <laughs> and the house we, I grew up in is uh, the one, the stone house you see and you come off the throughway. Um, I was born right here in New Paltz and in that old stone house. Um, so anyway, I had a, this crib quilt and then um, later on my mother um, somehow or other fell heir to a, <laughs> to a quilt frame. And uh, I did move that here to Woodland Pond with me. And I, for in the early days, because we moved in here in October of 2009, and um, I did set up the quilt frame up, in, I believe it was the fifth floor, one of the little lobbies as you go around and I think it was in the north wing, but I can't guarantee exactly where I was. <laughs> and then um, I did some quilting there and, and my, one of my granddaughters was very interested and she would come up with me and, and also quilt when she visited. Her name is Meggie. So that's, uh, you know, my mother would, do the quilting demonstrations at the old stone house date out on human Huguenot street for a few years oh. and uh, you know she was just set up on the lawns some in various places over the years and people would come by and ask her questions about you know quilting so that's that's kind of the background of how i got into it but, mm. I didn't dare to really start doing it on my own until I was retired. Oh, thank you. Carol, what about you? How did you get into this wonderful craft? I'm not really sure because I don't know why I chose quilts. My mother did not quilt, but she did design clothes and she did a lot of sewing. 
She did a lot of knitting, all kinds of crafts. And I liked that. And for some reason, I, as I said, I really have no idea why I got into quilting, but it was something I really wanted to do. Okay. Um, every good artisan usually has a teacher or more than one teacher. Can you talk about people that influenced and helped develop your art? When I started, I started at classes at um, Style Fabrics in Kingston, which is now not there, but with um, Cheryl Potter. And most of my basic learning was there with her. And then as I got more interested in quilting and I joined the Whitwood Quilt Guild, we had um, people coming in and giving workshops, various quilters with various techniques that you learned. And we had an apartment over our house and we used to have them stay with us and I would get the classes for free. Mm -hmm. So I went to a lot of them <laughs> and, and learned a lot of stuff. Okay. And you, Bernice, did you have teachers? Um, I too uh, belonged to the Wiltwood Quilt Guild and that was a good place to learn because of all the, not only your peers who were sitting in the room with you, but also the, the guests that came and the workshops that were held. It was, it was really very, very helpful. Lots of text, techniques that were shared it was mm. good. Now, when I look at quilts uh, with an uneducated eye, I see geometrics, florals, animals, uh, various types of abstract um, quilts. Can you talk about the various styles and what your preference is, or if you have a preference? I think Carol should do that. <laughs> <laughs> you can't volunteer somebody else. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We're friends. <laughs> we were. Okay. Did you did you meet at Wiltwick? No, oh. we met here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like picture quilts. I like um, things that tell a story. I'm not as fond of things that just have blocks that do the same thing all over. Uh, mostly, I think because I can't paint. And I wish I could, but you don't have to be as accurate when you're using fabric, putting stuff together to make pictures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have a preference, Bernice? Uh, I think, and Carol and I talked about this at one point, um, math was one of my, geometry was one of my favorite subjects. <laughs> and, and I think there is a math connection in it. But um, yeah, I definitely like the geometric uh, form of quilting. If you look at what I put on the table, it's really just one kind of square, but it depends on how you put them together. <laughs> so if you look, you can see, I'm gonna stand up a minute. Look carefully at this, you will see that each square is made up of a red strip and two red strips and two floral ones. And if you, so that's kind of the fun of it, you know, to come up with a unique pattern. And I didn't, this is not original with me, but then my choice of fabrics is mine. <laughs> Um, and you just put them in different directions and you get a nice zigzag going on. Mm -hmm. uh, Carol, you prepared a, um, an information sheet about the three basic styles of quilts. Do you want to just mention them briefly? Okay. <clears throat> I basically, I, I have some sheets if anyone's interested in, in quilting. There's a few up here that you could take. It talks about the basic styles of patchwork, which is putting the, the pieces of fabric together in a 
pattern. Um, applique quilt, <clears throat> where you cut out pieces and then you sew them onto a base. So you can do all kinds of pictures out of them. Embroidered quilt, where you take and you embroider things onto fabric and then put together blocks of that. And the crazy quilt, which kind of, it says what it is. <laughs> you use any fabric you want, you put it in any design you want, you do anything you want with it and make it your own. And an art quilt is basically you're creating art and you would do it like a painting and you'd use fabrics, but usually it's cotton, whereas the crazy quilt is any kind of fabric you wanna use. And you put it together with whatever techniques or embellishments you want to use in an art quilt. And that's basically the styles. Uh, what if there are residents here who may have quilted in the past or who are interested in learning how to quilt? Is there a group that they could come to and learn? <laughs> yes. We. Uh... If you'd like to know more about quilting, we, we would welcome anybody who's interested because we're getting a little thin on our <laughs> on our uh, membership at this point yeah. because, of course, shutdowns and so on don't help. Um, no, and, and we also lost Norma Strothanke. Norma Strothanke. And she was... Was our favorite person. She was absolutely fantastic. Mm. I uh, miss her tremendously. Yeah, she, um, I think one of her quilts is in the hallway. I'm not sure. Uh, the quilt of hers that I was fascinated with and love was the Frank Lloyd Wright quilt. Yes. 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 Uh, the yes. work involved in that. She got a medal for that one. There oh. is a picture on the bulletin board in the art studio, which is where quilters meet. And there is a picture of Norma with the group, and um, she she did. I think it's that quilt. Is it yes. the Frank Lloyd Wright? I have to take yes. it off. Yes, yes, that's in the but background was, behind um, her. We had a quilt show here in 2018. The whole pack was quilts. People from outside the community too were here. Is that oh, right? Yes. Yeah. And her Frank Lloyd Wright was across that wall. It was just mm. magnificent. Um, speaking of. Um, shows and other projects what if if i wanted to learn how to quilt which i don't because i don't have good <laughs> eye hand coordination but if i did um what types of things if i didn't want to commit to a blanket what types of things could i make well for instance this is a will be a lap size i I've, I've put one border on it and i may put more but um and that can be used for people in wheelchairs. And that's, a, it's good to start smaller. <laughs> well, some other things you could make, let's see, that would be really small. Bibs, uh, place, uh, pot holders, placements. Placements, okay. sure. Table runners is another good one. Small and actually, lines. one of the projects of the quilters along the line was clothing protectors. Oh, yes. yes that I we saw. made for people. It was a request from our health center. Health center. And uh, rather than calling them bibs, which in essence they were, but they were, you know, bigger, covering the lap as well when you sit down. Yeah. So that was a good project. I haven't us. seen any over there. I'm over there frequently, well, and maybe that's yeah. something. You also did some quilting as fundraisers, didn't you? Yes. The kaleidoscope. The kaleidoscope. Mm -hmm. um, we've had raffle quilts there. Raffle quilts, yeah. Um, if you haven't seen Bernice's and Carol's work, uh, a good deal of them are on two south and three south, but there are also quilts throughout the community and in the health center. So on a hot, steamy day, <laughs> when there's nothing to do, walk through the halls, except they ask you, please not to touch. Uh, now, 
through the uh, audio visual expertise of uh, Connor Copeland, we have a treat for you. No commercials, but we have a treat. <laughs> if you want to turn around, be on screen now, but you're going to be talking about each okay. quilt. Should I hit the lights, Connor? Oh. Oh, yes. Okay, go oh, talk, that's, talk about it. That's my favorite quilt. That's a tiger. It's based on a photo that I took of a tiger in India. Beautiful colors. And everything around it also has to do with India. I was going to ask you, are the colors the Indian flag? No, it's just the colorful, like saris, like just draped. And, uh, you know, the, and those, um, the four things at the top, bottom, and the sides, those are from the uh, decorations outside the Taj Mahal. Oh. The, they're in stone. Mine is in fabric. <laughs> and Beautiful. I have a question, Karen. The, did you actually embroider the tiger or was... I did that a um, panel that was already. Oh, no, seen. no, I put that together, but it's not embroidery, it's pieces of fabric. Mm, in the center, the tiger. Yes. Yeah. Oh, boy. yes. Yes. The first time I had to take it off and start again. And it took me three years to even have the nerve to start the quilt <laughs> because I was afraid I couldn't do it, but I liked the way it came oh, out. Yes, it's wonderful. wonderful. Oh. And this is one of my fish. I made three for Tom, and so I made one for myself. <laughs> Tom, couldn't you go out and catch the fish? You had to get three from her. How big is it? It's small. It's like okay. maybe a foot and a half yeah. by a foot and a half-ish. Beautiful. And this is a small wool hanging, too, for um, October that my friend here was nice enough to buy from I me. bought it from her, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a big compliment because she's a quilter. Oh, <laughs> this, this was a sensory quilt that I made for the health center. They were asking for things that they could touch and have different feeling to it. So the, the, um, the plant, the planter thing is made out of, uh, what do you call it? Quarterback? No, it's canvas. No, it's <laughs> burlap. Suede. 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 And the and the um, cat is made out of fake fur. Mm. <laughs> um, that's one of the uh, my granddaughter's dolls. American girl, I believe, <laughs> but I made a little quilt for her when she went to bed. <laughs> so that's just I, the, the smallest of crib quilts. Mm. This is actually the one of the first, the first, I think, quilt that I made. And it was very interesting because it's made all just of squares. But the way the squares were put originally, then you cut across them. And I think it, it was two cuts. And, and it and comes out with this design that almost looks like a bow tie when you look from corner to corner. Oh. This quilt I also put together. I found in the... Um, this is my mystery quilt. <laughs> I found in uh, the art studio all these squares of stars. And all but two of the stars were signed with names that I did not know. I had never seen these names before, nor did I know who they were. So that was the big mystery to try and track down you know, where this came from, who, who left all these stars in the art studio, 
which I felt were so beautiful. And um, so I just, you know, put the borders in and, uh, and the finish around. And um, it turned out I was visiting, uh, oh, hoteling folks. Yeah. Uh, she was in the health, art, in the health center, Connie. Hornbeck? Uh, not Hornbeck, Connie Hornbeck, yeah. I was in the health center and I went over to visit her. And I was talking about this and she said, oh, yeah, I, um, um, I think when they cleaned out my apartment because she had to go to the health center, she said, I guess my girls took the stars and put them all downstairs in the art studio. And she knew many of the names on there it was from uh, where she had lived prior to moving here. And so anyway, this is dedicated to Connie. <laughs> and where is that quilt now? It's hanging in the hallway down uh, in the hallway by the art studio. Okay. And you will see it. This is a table runner that I did. Mm. And I read this idea somewhere for a special occasion and it was a family gathering we had and it, and I made this it was at my daughter's house and I made this table runner for her and then we all signed our names all the people who were all the family members who were there to to uh join in at the mm -hmm. so I think everybody in the family signed that's nice that's, yeah. that's an heirloom oh. This was a project of the Woodland Pond quilters too. We knew, um, we had heard that in Swaziland, there was this need for people who are homeless and they sleep on the ground, but they needed a pad under them. So these are, these children, you know, were feeling really happy to receive these quilts. Um, and, um, so they're, they're, it was wonderful to get the picture of the children receiving the quilts from Swaziland. Um, I guess that's about all I can say about that. I don't know, is, is that you? That's Norma's. That's yeah. Grand daughter and son. Grandson, I think. Married. Yeah. Oh. And she Quilt show prior to giving it. Oh no, she gave it to them and they loaned it back. Got it back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They loaned it back. It's so. Yeah, you're going to read that. They can't hear me. Oh, okay. Uh, this was done by Norma Strothnicki and she did it for her grandson's marriage, I believe. Yes. And it's just fascinating. Every, every scare, square around the border there is a different design. So she, this picture was taken when we had the quilt show here at Woodland Pond and she, yeah, so that's in the hallway too. And you can take a good look at it. It's in the little lot lounge around the corner. No, the quilt went back to her grandson. Oh, okay. That's a picture then. Oh, uh, maybe not. Okay. Sorry, I'm misleading you. <laughs> Oh, this is the quilt that the quilters made for Sarah. This oh. is in memory of her son and her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard. <laughs> this is a quilt. You better take it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sarah came to the quilters and asked that we make a quilt in memory of Joseph and young Joey. And um, she gave us t-shirts. And uh, it was, it was a very sweet and but also a very um, difficult job to do. Mm. And we it's two sided. Um, yes, thank there. you. So you can see the t shirts that Sarah gave us. And if you notice the big sunny one in the lower right corner of the picture that's on the right side. Um, 
In there is a whoopee cushion. <laughs> it's a pocket. You can take it out. Yes. Oh. Um, so, and I remember the occasion. It was it was at Easter Sunday, I think she said. That's what I heard. Yes. And young Joey <laughs> had the whoopee cushion and he put it, his mother got up to take offering or something at church. <laughs> she came back to her seat and sat down we heard the big poof <laughs> uh, one of the techniques that carol uses on the bottom right hand corner of the quilt on the left side are photographs she is able to use photographs and print them onto fabric and then sew the fabric onto the quilt is that right carol yes okay that's that's really I, I have a special printer that has ink that is less it reacts less to water so it it lasts better mm. they came out so wonderfully it's beautiful oh, oh, this, this was the quilt show a quilt show and there's norma's quilt hanging in the back yes yeah and oh, there I mean, she is <laughs> on the far left yeah do we need to identify? Does everybody know everybody else? <laughs> well, Dolly, Dolly, Dolly is on is the right here. end. Yes. And uh, talk a bit about Dolly and her role in the fall. Yes. Well, we quilters have asked Dolly, and she she's here a lot, and she quilts upstairs for another group of people the, with Adela Decker for PEO. <laughs> but she, we've asked her if she would head up our Woodland Pond quilters, because she's got so many good ideas and so many much experience and she's a pro, she's a pro nice. and she's great. So we're looking forward to having Dolly's leadership. That's yes. great. Definitely um, you could turn on the lights now, I think. Um, Ca Carol, you had brought a book we didn't have a chance to talk about, but um, anyone who comes to the quilters meeting, perhaps you could bring that. Okay. And show them for inspiration. I just, I just want to say that when I was moving to Woodland Pond, I had to get rid of a lot of things, including quilts. So I took photos of all of them, or I had photos, and I put together a book. So even the ones that are not with me are with me. Yeah, that's <laughs> great. Well, um, we have one and a half minutes. Are there any questions, Betsy? I wonder how many quilts each of you has made. <laughs> She's made a lot more than I have. I have no idea. <laughs> Bill? So there's piecing to, to make a picture, and then there's stitching, which I always thought was what quilting was all about. Do you have a favorite part of, of this whole process? I do. Repeat your question. Uh, Bill is asking about the quilting itself. Yes. Right. This, which is what? The which is the stitching that holds the, the the purpose of quilting is to hold three layers together. Right. You have the top, which this one is. I know. I don't. I have not yet put a backing on it or used. There's batting. That is batting that goes in between, and that gives it the softness. So the purpose is to hold it all together. So you quilt. Yeah. <laughs> But quilting has gotten very creative. Now you ask if we have a, a favorite part. I don't quilt any of the quilts that I really care about. I quilt the quilts that I'm gonna be using on beds or whatever. Uh, I send the other ones out to a, a super great quilter to do, especially the big ones. Hmm. My favorite is pl planning, designing the quilt planning it out. That's my favorite part. Um, we are just about our time limit. And I want to thank Carol and Bernice for sharing their expertise. And of course, Connor Copeland for the audio visual. Yes, expertise. thank you, Connor. Great job, so, Connor. Thank you. So hopefully you'll have 300 people at your quilting meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be wonderful? <laughs> you ready, Dolly? Yes. <laughs> yeah. You can handle it. <laughs> <laughs>